Στο Ίδρυμα Σταύρο Νιάρχο και στην Ελλάδα κατέληξε το κύπελο του Σπύρου Λούι, το οποίο είχε βγει σε δημοπρασία από γνωστό οίκο. Στην Ελλάδα θα παραμείνει τελικά το κύπελο του Σπύρου Λούι. The Cup presented to Spiros Lewis during the first modern Olympics in 1996 when the marathon race was introduced for the first time to connect the modern games with classical Greece. The birthplace of civilization and athletics is at risk to leave Greece. This historic cup has been in the hands of the Lewis family until now when its last owner, the grandson and namesake of the athlete, after several unsuccessful attempts to sell it, decides to offer it for sale to Christie's, the renowned auction house in London. It's hard to believe that such a small trophy represents so much in sporting and Olympic history, said Christie's director, commenting on the international interest generated by the auction. After an intense competition, the cup is awarded to the highest bidder at the price of £541,250 or €655,454. The name of the bidder is revealed after the completion of the auction. In 2012, it is the Stavros Niarchos Foundation that crosses the finishing line of this intense auction first. We have won, thus, the marathon again. The cup is coming back home forever. All of us at the Stavros Niarchos Foundation are very glad that we were able to ensure that the Braille Cup remained in Greece and in a way that it can be shared for free with all Greeks and more. On the 18th of April of 2012, the Stavros Niarchos Foundation acquired in an auction held at Christie's South Kensington the Silver Cup, widely known as Spiros Lewis's Cup. The archaeological excavations at ancient Olympia and the Baron Pierre de Coubertin who after the end of the Franco-Prussian War in the late 1800s dreamed of peace between nations and of youth competing in stadiums and not as battlefields were the inspirations for the revival of the Olympic Games. The city selected to host the first modern Olympics was Athens, the capital of the country that gave birth to them. Athens embraced the Games enthusiastically, although the selection coincided with a particularly difficult situation. In December 1893, the government of Prime Minister Harilaos Trikoupis had just declared bankruptcy. The renovation of the ancient marble stadium where the Games took place was completed thanks to the generous donation of a major benefactor, Georgios Saverov. The first modern Olympics were the most important international sporting event up to then, attracting athletes from 14 countries and over 80,000 enthusiastic spectators. The philologist and Hellenist Michel Breal had the inspiration of reviving the course that legendary Philippides had run in order to announce the victorious outcome of the Battle of Marathon. Breal's purpose was to honor the Greeks that had stopped the invasion of the Persians. Michel Breal, who actually had underestimated the distance, convinced his friend Pierre de Coubertin to propose to the members of the Olympic Committee the addition of the marathon race, which was destined to evolve into the greatest and most emotional moment of all modern Olympic Games. The entrance of the runners and their last lap towards the finishing line symbolizes the completion of the battle and is honored greatly by the spectators. The Cup, which was designed and sponsored by Michel Breal, the Parisian Objet d'Art, as the press of the time refers to it, bears the inscription 1896 Olympic Games Marathon Race given by Michel Breal and is decorated with birds and plants, an allusion to the swamps of the Marathon Plain that were well known in antiquity and to the historic battle. Rumor has it that the shape of the trophy was most likely inspired by the silver one given at the Heraklia Games that used to occur in the area. The cup has great historical significance. Michel Brial, one of the leading French intellectuals of that time, who had actively participated in the discussions for the revival of the Games, firmly believed that the Games needed a new sport event to define them as modern and at the same time a sport event that will connect them to its classical heritage by means that it was based on the legend that Phidippides had run from Marathon to Athens 
in order to announce that the Athenians had won the Battle of Marathon against the Persians. He also believed that a new event like that needed a special award, and he was the one who proposed that the Silver Cup was designed to be given only to the winner of that first marathon race. Michel Breal did not attend the 1896 Olympic Games to present the trophy to the winner in person as he wished. However, he arranged for the cup to be sent to the French School of Athens, the director of which handed it over to the Olympic Committee. He followed all developments through telegrams by the president of the International Olympic Committee, Dimitrios Vigelas. In March of 1896, right before the opening of the Games, in a letter to Vikelas, he wrote, among other things, Dear friend, being unable, unfortunately, to reward the winner of the marathon race in person, I would like to sincerely congratulate him from afar. I don't know what his nationality will be, yet regardless of it, I pronounce him representative of the Greek heritage. The Greek public w was very uh, enthusiastic. Great importance was attached to the race and everyone wanted a Greek to win this, which they considered a Greek race. The Greeks were determined to excel in this new marathon race and they organized preliminary trials for the selection of the runners who would participate. Colonel Papadiamadopoulos was in charge and he happened to have been Spiros Lewis's commander during his military service. He remembered the remarkable endurance of the young water carrier from Marossi and insisted on his participation in the games. 17 out of the 25 runners that had traveled to Marathon participated in the race. Out of the 17, coming from five different countries, only 10 completed the race. The French winner of the 1500 meters, Albain Lemousieux, gave a very fast pace to the race. He led from very early, covering the first 19 kilometers in only an hour. The Australian, Edwin Flack, and the American, Arthur Blake, followed from the start, maintaining these positions up to the 23rd kilometer when the American dropped out. Lewis, who knows the course well, runs a wait-and-see race, and he is in fifth place, two kilometers behind the leading Frenchman, who runs out of steam at the 32nd kilometer, leaving the Australian to lead the race. Lewis's endurance and tactics neutralized the Australian three kilometers before the finishing line. About three kilometers away from the stadium, he took the lead uh, in the race. Soon as this became known in the stadium, there was great enthusiasm and people were anticipating and hoping that the Greek runner would maintain his lead. Spiros Lewis finishes the race in two hours, 58 minutes and 50 seconds, followed by the Greek Harilos Vasilakos and the Hungarian Gula Kölner, and enters permanently the realm of the legendary. This is how Spiros Lewis describes the last minutes of the marathon. When I passed the Australian, my feet became loose, but because of the fast pace, I began to run out of steam. No, I said to myself, if I stop now, I'll bring shame to Helen and my family. I will endure. I will win so that the Greek flag is raised and our national anthem is heard. I started chanting the anthem, aligning the rhythm of my running to its music. I enter the stadium, absolute frenzy. Some are crying, others are cheering and clapping, men waving hats and women's scarves. Suddenly the princes take me on the shoulders and bring me in front of the king. I saw his tears running down and to cheer with the crowd, He's Greek. He's Greek. The race took place in the last day of the Olympic Games. The fact that it was won by a Greek athlete, Spiros Lewis, not only created enormous enthusiasm in Athens, but at the same time provided a fitting climax to the successful conclusion of the first modern Olympic Games. The significance of the marathon race in the 1896 Olympics goes beyond the fact that it was a moment of great pride for the Greeks because a Greek, Spiros Louis, had won the race. Uh, scholars have argued that the scenes that took place at the finish of the marathon race were in a sense the exclamation mark that the 1896 
Olympics needed. They were a moment of collective experience and emotion which joined uh, the athletes, the crowd, and everyone in a, a, a shared experience of exhilaration as they saw Lewis finishing. And uh, that particular experience meant that the Olympic Games became something memorable and it, this helped the Olympic Games uh, continue throughout the 20th century and become one of the most important sporting events in the world. Michel Breal's cup, accompanied by an olive branch, a medal, an ancient vase offered by Professor Lambu, and an honorary diploma by the king, is now in the hands of the first marathon winner and in the heart and soul of the entire Greek nation. The fact that the family managed to preserve the cup through more than a century symbolizes the importance that Greeks attached to their ancient heritage and the Olympic Games. The Spiros Louis Cup won in 1896 at the first modern Olympic Games and at the first ever competitive marathon race represents a piece of Greece's modern history and at the same time a piece of Greece's heritage, reminding us all of our history, heritage and above all of our resilient spirit. Just as Spiros Louis did more than 100 years ago, we hope that the Cup can inspire the Greek spirit and pride and help us all as a nation to overcome these very difficult times. The Cup will be on permanent display at the Stavros Niarchos Foundation Cultural Center. Following this announcement, the Foundation committed publicly to make the Cup accessible to all, and so began a process of evaluating and identifying possible temporary exhibition areas for the Cup. With two basic criteria in mind, first the Cup's widest possible and free accessibility for the wider public, and second, its safety while on display, the Foundation decided that the Acropolis Museum would be the best fit for the Cup's first temporary home. This will begin in September 2012 and last for one year. And throughout this process, while the Cup remains at the Acropolis Museum, the Foundation will continue its efforts to identify more possible suitable exhibition venues for the Cup before this is moved to its permanent house at the Stavros Niarchos Foundation Cultural Center in 2015, a project developed through complete funding by the Foundation and delivered as a grant to the Greek state. Designed by the Pritzker award-winning architect Renzo Piano, the Niarchos Foundation Cultural Center will be a place of culture, education and entertainment and will enrich the daily lives of Greeks and attract visitors from all over the world through both its impressive premises and the rich experience it will offer online. We would like to thank the Acropolis Museum for acting as the temporary home of the Cup and we're looking very much forward to the Cup moving to its permanent viewing location at the Stavros Nyakos Foundation Cultural Center when completed in 2015.